This episode is brought to you by Honeysuckle White. If you're looking for ways to make mealtime healthier in the new year, make your favorite recipes with turkey from Honeysuckle White. Take the pressure off. Keep it simple and tasty without sacrificing flavor for nutrition. Whether you want a delicious sandwich or post-workout protein, Honeysuckle White turkey can do it all. Visit HoneysuckleWhite.com for recipe inspiration and to find retailers near you. Honeysuckle White. Eat what you love. In today's healthcare world, there's more patient choice than ever before. In fact, we make decisions about our health every day, sometimes without even realizing it. We choose one allergy medication over another at the grocery store, or we look online and decide to go to the highest rated orthopedic specialist for knee surgery. In economics, choice always seems like a good thing, but with so many options, do regular people have the tools they need to make medical decisions? Basically, we have a lot of choice, a lot of responsibility, and not always all the tools and information to handle it. That's Dr. Talia Mirenschatz, visiting researcher at the University of Cambridge and author of the book, Your Life Depends on It, What You Can Do to Make Better Choices About Your Health. Mirenschatz says today we've become healthcare consumers, meaning just like we have a choice in what restaurant we go to or what jeans to buy, we now have a wide selection when it comes to our health care. Mirren Schatz describes it as the Starbucks model. How did we become what I call healthcare consumers, which means you get to choose so many things about your healthcare, your medication, anything, than we ever used to be able to. So the first thing that changed is this society changed, our habits changed. We are much more accustomed now to being in charge to having choice in our cup of coffee. I mean, if you think of Dunkin' Donuts, you just get a cup and it's either medium or large and that's it, mister. Or you go to Starbucks and you have an endless amount of choices. We're becoming much more of the Starbucks model and we're becoming more used to it. And we are learning to demand it. Is that to our benefit? I don't know. As Mirren Schatz explains, we're a society of choice. There's a reason we love going to the grocery store and having dozens of different types of milk or ice cream to choose from. Usually when you go to buy ice cream or milk, you usually buy the same thing. And when you're in a foreign country, you're like, what? What sort of milk do they have? What do I like? What? How, the 3%, 1%, this is skim, it's very confusing. Now let's move away from milk, which doesn't cost much. And if you don't like it, you can buy another carton of milk to medicine. And that's confusing. And that is much more complicated than skim or whole And that is very scary. And there's good reason to be scared. With all of these choices, the liability for what happens falls more on us and less on the doctor. But all of these choices are useless if we don't understand what we're choosing between. In order to choose one course of treatment over another, we have to understand what our physician is saying, which might be easier said than done. I interviewed a doctor as a patient, because I want to show that everything that happens to patients happens to them regardless of their education and experience. So we're having a conversation and she mentions a lot of medical terms and I'm writing them down real quickly on my laptop. I get home and I see I got all of them wrong except bronchitis. So what does this mean? It means it's really difficult to understand medical terms. It's very hard to know what the doctor is talking about unless you write it down, unless you ask questions, unless you ask your doctor to explain. Marin Schott says the lack of effective communication is a major issue in our current medical system. You have the right to understand the medical terms, the medical conditions you have, the treatments you're being offered, the medication you're offered or are taking, and their side effects. You can't give people the responsibility to choose and then say, hey, well, you know, you can't understand this, so choose whatever. That makes absolutely no sense. And that's just shirking. That's just saying, well, I'm the medical system. I expect you to choose, and I'm not taking steps to help you get there. But this lack of communication isn't bad just for patient health. It also has financial implications. It's a medical issue because if you don't understand, you will not follow up on the treatment and you might come back and that costs money. So I started talking about money because I thought if anything drives not just healthcare systems, any system, any organizations, it's the bottom line. So yes, our doctors are not taught how to explain 
in their defense, they're also not given the tools to explain information very well. There are wonderful technological tools, and it's always a hard sell because you go into a hospital and you say, well, your patients will understand better. And the hospital is like, that's really nice to have, but let me show you my list of have to have, and I'm going to pay for that first. So organizations really need to step up and help us. So what happens when you can't get the information you need from your doctor or didn't understand what he or she said? Many patients turn to the web, sometimes to social media, which is full of misinformation. It's true that doctors don't always explain very well. And that's a problem. It's everybody suffers. Basically, we suffer because we don't understand. They suffer because if they're not obtuse, they understand that we're leaving their office, scratching our heads and going like, what was that? And the medical system loses. People do want to know what the heck is going on and what they should do. They go on any website and any social media platform where someone will offer them the answer and it can be an answer or it can be an answer with air quotes because it can be a scientifically non-valid piece of information that might put their life in danger. Marin Schott says all of this is only made worse by the echo chamber that exists on social media. For example, what's called confirmation bias. What that means is you have an opinion and you want it to be reinforced. You want to be reassured that you're right. Unfortunately, these echo chambers were only magnified during COVID. Specifically with COVID, doctors were kind of removed from the picture. They were not part of the equation. Your own doctor, you were not told to consult with them. And your doctor, ideally, is the person who you trust, who knows you, and you go to them and they tell you what to do if you want them to tell you what to do, or they explain things to you. So in my mind, one of the tragedies of COVID is that COVID became very politicized and COVID became identified with political views. Marin Schott says any issue that becomes overly politicized has the potential to harm our health. If we're going to our echo chambers where we hear in clear terms, in authoritative terms, very tempting, very reassuring, things that may or may not be accurate, we might be setting ourselves up for failure, basically. And I call it failure because I think our goal as animals, that our instinct is survival. Our goal is to survive and to protect ourselves. And we might not be doing ourselves a very good service if we only go into places that claim one point of view and we just shut our eyes to the other point of view. And then there's the emotional aspect of getting treatment. It's not fun to be sick. And no matter what side of the political aisle you fall on, we all have the common goal to feel better. As we become healthcare consumers, we sometimes buy, sometimes for a lot of money, treatments or cure-alls or anything that offer us this reassurance that everything's going to be fine. And sometimes it's just a scam. Sometimes it's just wrong. Or we read that everything's going to be fine into something that cannot be there. So for starters, I think when you're a healthcare consumer, when you're a patient, when you're in pain, when you're afraid, you're overwhelmed to begin with. And that's so understandable. You can't berate yourself for being overwhelmed because that just means you're human. You know who else is human? Doctors. Mirren Schott says it's not realistic to expect them to be perfect 100% of the time. Physician burnout is really huge. About 50% of the doctors report that. And when doctors report that they're burnt out, you ask them, have you made a major medical mistake over the past three months? And many will say yes. And uh, it's scary. It's really scary. If you multiply the number of doctors who said yes by the number of patients they saw, even if they only make one major mistake per three months, that's too many mistakes. So I'm mentioning that because I think physician burnout is an organizational issue by and large. The amount of time they have to spend doing data entry, et cetera, is huge. And it's a burden and it's not what they came there to do. They understand that they have to do this, but it's becoming front and center. There's been more discussion around provider burnout, especially over the last year. But Mirren Schott says more still needs to be done. I always think We can't just put it on the doctors. We can't just say, oh, you need to be more resilient or why don't you do yoga? If you work in human burden with a lot of responsibility because people's lives are in your hands, 
and you don't have time to recover. And if a patient, God forbid, dies, there are no programs to support you. It's like, what is happening here? Doctors are such a valuable resource. They should be treated as such. So until healthcare systems do that or do more of that, we are going to be looking at physician burnout. It's just going to be there. Mirren Schatz explains that doctors, just like patients, get a lot of satisfaction from the personal one-on-one interactions. When patient and doctor are able to form a relationship, it leads to better health care. The amount of time they get to spend with you, to actually look at you and say, how are you? It's so good to see you. Tell me, how are you? How have you been doing? How's your mom? Because they know that I help her. That's very meaningful. That forms a relationship. And a relationship with your doctor is not just nice to have. It's good for you because it increases your trust in your doctor. It increases your adherence to whatever they prescribe you. And it increases your doctor's satisfaction because they feel like they're a person. And that's an organizational cure. I think if we gave doctors more time with their patients, that would help. That would help create a relationship. To help take the burden off doctors, Mirren Schatz says we can lean more on the right kind of technology. We watch TV. All of us watch a lot of TV a lot of the time or something on YouTube, on something on Netflix. You get the point. We can be sent a link and we can be sent to a website that will explain, you've been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes. This is what type 2 diabetes means. And it's in very clear terms, and you can click on it again and again and again, and you can show your sister because she wants to understand, and that's easy. And that takes some of the burden off the doctor. It is mind-blowing to me that it doesn't happen more. And I think that is something that would really help with physician burnout because they want to connect with you. They don't want to give you the spiel on diabetes for the seventh time this day or this week. They want to say, Mr. X, how do you feel about this? How can I help you? What are your main concerns? What are we going to do now? That's why they went to medical school, not to be a broken record. A good patient-doctor relationship and effective technology both make medical decision-making easier. Marin Schatz says the last step is to focus on just three things. It's like a set of questions that I created. Ask me about what matters. What are the risks? What are the benefits? What are the alternatives? So if we have three pieces of information about each procedure and we're comparing two procedures, I think we can handle that. I think that's not too much. We don't need 20 pieces of information. We're just going to be entirely swamped. You can find more about Dr. Talia Mirenschatz and all of our guests on our website, radiohealthjournal.org. This segment originally aired in October 2021 and was written and produced by Libby Foster. Our lead producer is Kristen Farah. Our executive producer is Amira Zaveri. I'm Elizabeth Westfield. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. People who have been lifelong nail biters who are really biting down by the cuticle area, sometimes their nails are very wide and it's very hard to reverse that the long-term effects of nail biting. But first, the technology that's taking over operating rooms. It is life-saving and it really has been a game changer in our approach to this treatment. All that and more on Radio Health Journal. I'm Elizabeth Westfield, host of Radio Health Journal. If you enjoy listening to Radio Health Journal, You'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. When I look at intelligent systems on machines, the consciousness is already kind of there. Are artificial intelligence systems already conscious? Experts can't seem to agree. Then... I've done a painting of bin Laden when he was captured and killed and that was a big cover. Speaking with the man behind some of the most prominent illustrations of our time, I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Viewpoints on your favorite radio station, iTunes and Stitcher. And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. 
Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.